Hi, I'm Tony Northrup and I'm in the studio today for my book, Stunning Digital Photography, to talk about tripods. Now, I have every tripod in my collection here, which I count to be 11 different tripods, plus quite a few accessories. Uh, so I'm going to go over them one by one, starting with the smallest and working my way up to the largest. So here's the smallest class of tripod I have. This is a tabletop tripod. These are only good for supporting a very lightweight camera, like a point and shoot camera. Um, it's good enough if you want to use a point and shoot camera for a self portrait, like taking a picture of your family for a Christmas card, or if you want to grab a night shot while you're on the go. They're exceptionally portable and they only cost a few dollars. Just about every camera ever made has a common tripod port. They have the exact same threading, which allows you to use any tripod with any camera, so you never have to worry about compatibility issues. Uh, there's one big oversight though, and that's the most popular cameras today. Uh, the camera phones don't happen to have a tripod mount, so I want to show you this accessory. There are a few different models you can get. Um, this particular one I found, it's really simple and it works great. It's just a clamp, and you secure it to your camera phone, and it's got two different tripod mounts. So from here I could attach it to any tripod and it would allow me to hold my uh, smartphone either horizontally or vertically. Up next I have this very versatile Joby tripod. The legs are stiff yet flexible, allowing you to wrap them around smaller things or hang them over the edge of something. It doesn't support a lot of weight acting as a tabletop tripod, but it's good enough for a lightweight SLR. If you were to try to put something heavier on it, it would end up bending a little bit. Uh, but it's good for what it does. Up next I have this Eddie Bauer UltraPod. It's a very small tabletop tripod with one really useful feature and that's this Velcro strap. This allows me to stick it to the side of something. Of course it's not going to support a lot of weight, it's really lightweight, but I find it really useful for smaller cameras or my smartphone. Now on the top of this you'll notice that it has a hot shoe. This is useful for attaching a flash to. If I'm using an off-camera flash, I can attach this to one of the legs of my tripod and then put a flash here and trigger that flash. Up next is this Delkin Fat Gecko. This is a suction cupped base camera mount. So what I can do with this is I can stick it to any window or basically any flat surface. Now you'll see that I use this in some of my videos to attach it to the side of my car. I find it holds really well. Now I don't want to take any responsibility if you don't have the same luck, but for me it's worked great. Up next I have this terrible Samsonite tripod. Now this is the first tripod I ever bought and I got it free with a camera bag or something. And that's about what it's worth. It's not a great tripod. Um, it's aluminum, you can hear it creaking. So you'll notice that like most tripods it has collapsible legs that allows me to adjust it to different heights and it makes it smaller when I'm packing it in a bag and I want to store it. Um, this one goes up to about three or four feet which means if I'm going to be using it I'd have to be crouched down the whole time. Uh, I want to point out a couple of features of this, of this. You'll see that the legs and the head are all one unit. Up next I'll show you one that's a little bit separate. Uh, i also point out that this head has a stick on it and it pans from side to side or up and down. This is called a pan tilt head and it's used primarily for video. Up next I have this Manfrotto MKC3H01 tripod. This is an ultra small tripod uh, that extends pretty far and it's got an integrated head in it. Uh, this is both a ball head and a pan and tilt head. It's a hybrid head and it allows me to either rotate anywhere including a vertical orientation for photography or it allows me to switch it to pan and tilt mode to video mode where I can do smooth pans and tilts. This is the first tripod with a quick release plate. A quick release plate allows you to attach your camera to a separate piece. You can then easily slide your camera in and out of it. I'll also show an interesting feature of this tripod and that is that it has an adjustable tension grip. By turning this dial here, I can adjust just how firm or loose this is. One more feature that I want to show on this tripod is an extending center column. Most tripods will have this feature. You can loosen that up and then get a couple more inches, maybe a foot, out of your tripod's height. That allows you to get closer up to eye level, um, but it has a big downside, and that is a lack of stability. Once you extend that extra length, you're going to find it's a little more wobbly, especially in wind. So it's okay if you're doing short exposures, uh, but if you're doing a long exposure, for example at night, 
you're going to want to do your best to not use that center column. You can do this by choosing a tripod of an appropriate height. People recommend having a tripod that is as tall as you are. Um, you don't actually need that. You can go about a foot shorter than you are because uh, the head attached to it and the camera attached to it elevate the camera up quite a bit. Up next we have my travel photography tripod uh, as opposed to my travel video tripod. You can see this has four leg sections so it can collapse really tight. Um, these are flip locks which are my preferred method. Um, some people prefer locks that screw. I like the ones that flip. It just makes it a little easier for me to uh, expand and collapse. Now this tripod has a couple of great features. First there's a, I can extend the center column here and push in a little switch here to rotate it into a horizontal position. Um, this is useful if you want to get really close to the ground um, or if you're going to be holding the camera in a vertical position for a long time. So I don't use it that often but it's nice to know that it's there. Um, just like any tripod uh, you can replace the head on it. So I use this joystick style tripod head um, when I'm in the studio or not traveling very far, it allows one-handed adjustments. I can just grip it and then move the ball head to any position. Um, I can switch the head out with a smaller, lighter head though. This is the head that I use when I travel. Um, as you can see, it basically requires two-handed operation. I have to grip it and then twist this, and then I can adjust it freely. Um, the extra weight makes a big difference when it's in your bag, especially when the airline is charging you for the weight of your bags. So up next I'm going to move over to my travel video tripod. This is a little bit heavier tripod because you need a heavier tripod for video. It's really important that nothing move. A couple other things make it unique. First it's got this center column here. Um, if I twist it like this to unlock it, I can then level the tripod head. With photography it's okay if the shot's a little bit off kilter. It almost always is because you go in in Lightroom and uh, straighten it out in post, no big deal. But in video it's really important that you get it level because it's not as easy to adjust it. Things end up getting less sharp. Um, so you want a leveling head like that and it makes a big difference. Um, second, the head attached is a pan and tilt head rather than being a ball head. That means it can't move into a vertical position easily. However, when I'm filming I can really easily and smoothly pan left and right or up and down. The next item is not a tripod, it's a monopod. A monopod is just a one-legged tripod, but um, it's primarily used to help support the weight of your camera. It's really useful when you're shooting wildlife with a big, huge telephoto lens because your arms will get tired, and with the 500 millimeter lens I use, I can only hold it up for maybe 30 seconds or so, and if you want to stalk a bird for a couple of hours, you're going to need something to take the weight off. I also use this a lot in the studio. Um, Chelsea, for example, will use it to support the 70-200 millimeter portrait lens that we have when we're doing stock shoots. This monopod has a couple of nice features. First, notice that the foot here allows me to easily extend it. All I have to do is step on that and then I can pull it up to any height that I want. Um, it will not go down on its own. It's got a release here. I just need to push that in with my pinky, squeeze this, and then I can adjust it down. Combine those two features allow me to easily adjust it to any height, which is really important when you're moving around a lot. The head I have on here is a, another type of joystick head. So it allows one-handed operation. I grip it and then I can twist it. So I have one last tripod I want to show you. It's the biggest in my collection. So to do that, I'm going to put this camera and point it towards Chelsea so that we can have her talk about it. I'm using a Manfrotto tripod here. I think it's about the biggest model that they make. It's model number 475B. It extends to be about seven and a half feet tall and it's really sturdy and really heavy so I don't like to carry it around much. I'm also using a Manfrotto video head. It's really nice because it has the fluid drag system so you can pan really smoothly both sideways and up and down. You can adjust the tension here with this knob. This is model number uh, MVH502AH. Another thing that I really like about using this head for video is that it has this long quick release plate so you can move it back and forth to balance even a heavier camera. This accessory here is really great. We use it to put our audio recorder on it but you can also put an umbrella or your PC or even some notes. This video is just meant to supplement our book Stunning Digital Photography so if you'd like more in-depth information check out our gear section. 
If you like this video, click subscribe up above and like down below. You can also check us out on our Facebook page, Tony Northrup Photography. Thanks.